Hello, welcome to the Crawley College open event for the construction trades, which includes bricklaying and carpentry and joinery. Hello, um, my name is Leslie Edwards and I'm head of learning for um, construction trades, um, which includes bricklaying, carpentry and joinery here at Crawley College. Thank you for attending our session. Um, I have my team with me who I'll introduce further into the videos and the presentations. Um, and um, we will now continue with the presentation. At the college, we were really, really proud at the beginning of the year to be graded as Ofsted Outstanding. And this was within all aspects of the Ofsted framework. It's because of the expertise of our teachers. Um, they are vocational specialists and you are going to achieve outstanding teaching and learning when you come and join our, our group of learners. Um, as, as a college, we have the intent that we want to make sure that you as learners develop the skills that you need, not only to um, achieve the qualifications, but to achieve um, the skills and the personal developments that you need to work with employers and go and get jobs because that's really what it's all about. We do work with employ employers, both large and small, which you'll find out more about within the presentation. We do site visits, um, work experience, and there's lots of um, opportunities to work with employers to enhance your practical and theory learning. Within um, Crawley over the last last few years and there's been an increase in population of over 22 percent and that's why you see many new developments going on within the Crawley area. You may notice the new developments in the Telford Place and the county buildings but also around the outskirts of the town you'll see new housing estates popping up and these are the employers that we are working with and that's what makes us truly outstanding. Um, working with these industry employers we um, actually have employer panels and we meet with them once each term and they have an input into what we put into our curriculum. So it's not just about the qualification, it's about the skills that these employers need to make you guys employable to them. Also within our study programmes, we love to stretch and challenge the lear you as learners. So we will be setting you individualised targets throughout your time with us. Also for students that have additional needs, we have a dedicated additional support team. Um, more details about additional support can be found on the website as there are webinars regarding the support that they have to offer you. But we do have a, a, a team as well, our ACES team, that will actually give you some personal tutoring sessions and focus on developing independence and soft skills to make you really, really ready to go out and work with the employers. Some of the subjects that they touch on are democracy, e-safety, environment, law, money matters, mental health, and the, there's an array of different subjects that they will deliver with you. We have a positive approach to progression, and we also have a dedicated team called Progression Plus that will help you at any point to look um, at furthering opportunities regarding courses, or employment. Um, I'm now going to introduce you to the, my team who are here. Um, I have Barry, who is um, my Deputy Head of Learning. I have Jeremy, Trevor and Simon, who are from the construction team. Um, sorry, they, everyone's from the construction team, but from the carpentry and joinery team. And Barry is also here to talk to you um, regarding our bricklaying um, offer. But at the moment, I'm going to hand over to you, um, to Barry, to talk about work experience. Thank you, Leslie. Um, the work experience uh, section of our courses is a really, really valuable element. And over the last couple of years, we've worked really hard to build up relationships with many local employers. And as you can see from the, uh, the slide, some really huge companies are involved and we're delighted to have built up relationships and partnerships with. Um, every student will go out on work experience, whichever level they're on, and uh, just introduce them 
for many of them for the first time to the industry that they're studying and that they've chosen to chosen to study in. Um, it gives the students an ideal chance, well, an excellent opportunity to taste the experience of real life work, um, meet people that have come along the same routes as them, um, put into practice the skills and the knowledge that they've learned in college um, and to forge relationships and build their confidence towards making their next steps or their ultimate steps into the workplace. Um, alongside work experience, uh, we've had, we have a number of site visits. Um, we've enjoyed a lot of site visits with Buxton's in the last year because they've been working very, very closely at the college. Uh, some of you may have seen the development gone up. We've um, got excellent partnership with Taylor Wimpy. Um, we have numerous site visits with them, as well as having guest speakers in um, as and their um, tradesmen come in as well in supporting their apprentices who attend at the college. Um, we have people out on work experience with Mears, who's um, a big contractor for Crawley Council. Um, I'm sure you've seen their vans if you're local nipping around. Um, and we're very excited about upcoming uh, partnership with St Modwin Homes, who have got a large development up on the Copthorne Road. Um, in addition to all of these, we work with local small builders who are happy to take our, take our students, um, give them work experience, and this has been invaluable over the last, over the last year. Um, so that's a little bit about work experience. I'd now like to introduce a video tour of our workshops. Sorry, if I, I don't know if you heard me then. Um, if I was unmuted, um, I'd like to just hand you over to Jeremy Ridley now, who will talk us through the carpentry offer. Apologies. Hello, hello there. Yes, good evening to everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Jeremy Ridley. I'm one of the lecturers here uh, delivering carpentry and joinery at Crawley College. Um, <clears throat> the the uh, journey of the youngsters and the not so young start here at Crawley College in the Carpentry and Joinery Level 1 department. Uh, so here is very much the underpinning skills of uh, being able to um, look at drawings, understand how they work, um, combine that with looking at a range of different sorts of uh, tools and equipment, hand tools especially. We do spend quite a lot of time looking at hand tools, how to use them, maintain them, and uh, subsequently pr uh, perfect the use of making joints and uh, frames, things like that. Another part of the level one qualification is um, very keen to get introduced correctly to the portable power tools. 
So these electric tools can obviously uh, cause a lot of damage, but equally used in the right tool with the right training, uh, they can be very, very supportive in the whole carpentry and joinery sector. Um, the qualification is six units. So within that, there's, uh, as I say, practical, and there's a theory element associated with each one of those uh, six units, which uh, combines in a, a uh, online exam at the end of that, that time. Progression is absolutely essential and really key uh, to stretch and challenge everybody. So once level one has been completed, then it's a question of moving on to either site carpentry bench joinery or furniture making, certainly here at the college. Site carpentry is moving into that area whereby uh, you're working out on site, putting uh, up the likes of uh, roofs, flooring, stud work, dividing walls, um, and then doing some more detailed work in relation to fitting stairs, skirtings, architraves, hanging those lovely doors as well. The bench joinery, however, is the one that makes them. Uh, so that's the starting point, really, of actually making the items, frames, door frames, doors, windows, stairs, some of the lovely stairs that you saw in the video, fantastic stuff happening there. And furniture making is our newest, uh, newest course. Um, and of course, that will um, be a feature in anybody's uh, living room. So that's level two, and again, stretching on even further, we get, then go up to level three, which uh, will deal with much more complex uh, aspects associated with that. We have a, an excellent facilities here at level one, level two, and level three, um, again, shown in the video, uh, envious of a lot of other colleges, especially the wood machining uh, workshop, which is absolutely fantastic. So look forward to seeing you and receiving your application and meeting you. Thank you. I'll pass you back to uh, Barry Hutton now. Thank you, Jeremy. I'd just like to take you through the Brick Lane offer, um, give it a run down. In the Brick Lane section, we offer Level 1 uh, Brick Lane and Level 1 Employment Skills. Now, Employment Skills, for those of you who have not heard of it, is our multi-trades introductory course. Um, at level one, it's aimed at people who know that they're interested in construction, but they're not quite sure what strand of construction they uh, or specific trade that they would want to um, want to follow. So it gives a taster of a carpentry, plastering, painting and decorating, ceramic tiling, brick laying, um, and over those, it gives everyone a chance chance to have a try before they buy or go on to a trade specific course. Um, and really gives everybody, as I say, a chance to decide whether construction is for them. Uh, it's a fast moving course um, and it's assessed by um, practical assessment. So you're graded on your practical work and, um, and also there is a uh, Theory, the theory element is by portfolio building, um, and that's how that one's assessed. Level one bricklaying is a, a real introducing right from the basics of bricklaying. So you come in and you learn the trowel skills and how to use all the tools um, for the whole right from the very beginnings. Um, the course is covers setting out, mixing materials. Um, one brick walling, cavity walling, block work, um, and it's designed so that at the end of it, a student would be uh, employable and would also be able to assist a bricklayer in building, more or less building a house. Okay, so all those elements. In level two bricklaying, they'd build on that knowledge, build on those skills, so that they'd be ready to try and do those skills on their own. So level one and level two follow on nicely. Um, and as I say, you use all of the knowledge from level one in level two to develop your skills uh, to make you employable as a bricklayer. Um, also, we offer level two employment skills, which uh, is aimed at people who are looking to go in as multi-traders um, and go into probably pop, uh, property maintenance side of things. Um, this has proved useful for people who are going to work 
um, trying to follow apprenticeship routes with local uh, maintenance companies such as Mears or the council um, and they've decided to go that route rather than branch off and do a, a specific trade at that time. Um, Diploma level one and level two bricklaying are assessed by practical examinations and by um, online exams and uh, the employment skills at level two is assessed through portfolio and through practical uh, practical tests. Um, I think that just about wraps that bit up. I'd like to hand over now to Simon, I believe, who's going to talk. Oh no, sorry, it's still me. Um, I'll just have a quick overview. We've got on there, we've got T levels and uh, transition. I'd just like to give a quick introduction to uh, T levels for those of you who are not aware of what they are. Um, T level is a new two year technical qualification uh, that were launched in this September. We're currently developing ours with a view to introduce them next year. They're a full time course, 80% of the time is in industry, 20%, sorry, 80% of the time is in college, 20% of the time is in industry, um, with a minimum of 45 days industry placement, which must be complete with an external employer to pass the course. Um, a T level is the equivalent to three A levels, and the progression route is either into higher, uh, higher apprenticeship, uh, university or skilled employment. Um, so that's the T level. Um, underneath that, you'll see on the slide the higher national certificate, which we're currently running at level four. Um, that is the, in construction and the built environment. Um, so that's a, a bit more of a professional style course, and the progression from route from that is into into management. Um, if you're interested in either of those courses, there is more information on our website about those. Um, and then moving on to the apprenticeship, apprenticeship I'll just like to, um, introduce the trowel occupations of apprenticeship, and which uh, is another name for bricklaying apprenticeship, and that's offered at level two. Um, that's typically over two years, one day a week at, at the college, four days a week in the workplace, working with your employer. Um, these are a new standard uh, apprenticeship, so there's a slight change in the way that apprenticeships have, are, are run now, and um, they lean, lean forward to an endpoint assessment, which uh, covers the skills, knowledge and behaviours required to be a successful tradesman, um, and that's all wrapped up in a, an endpoint assessment that you complete when you are ready at the end of your training. Um, it covers all of the all of the things that are in level one and level two are all wrapped up into the apprenticeship program, as well as the skills and um, behaviours required for employment. I'd like to hand over now to my colleague Simon, who will take you through the carpentry options on apprenticeships. Thank you, Barry. My name's Simon Cole. I deliver level two and level three site carpentry. Welcome to the site carpentry department. Um, <clears throat> as Barry says, uh, we are the apprentices are on what we call the standards. And um, <clears throat> at the end of it, there's an endpoint assessment that they have to carry out. During the uh, time here with me, uh, level twos will cover um, stud work, fixing door linings, hanging doors, putting locks on the doors, going on to floor joists with tuss tenons, uh, laying flooring. Then we'll go on to um, uh, truss roofs with uh, fascia boards and barge boards. Um, <clears throat> checking out plans, we'll give you plans for the uh, truss roofs. So there's various different uh, styles of truss roofs to do. Um, We'll then go on to stairs, a straight flight of stairs, um, venturing on then to fixing kitchen units, doing the um, worktop, mason's mitre, and the cornice around the top of uh, wall units. Then we go on to level three. That's more advanced um, tasks. And in the level three, um, they will hang a pair and a half of doors with a rebated lock, um, go on to um, fixing, making up and fixing winding staircases. 
and doing a real complex roofing with dormer windows in. Um, and again, it's, a, it's on the standards. And at the end of the uh, time, there's uh, the endpoint assessment. We cover sort of roughly 80% practical, 20% of theory. And while you're carrying out your apprenticeships, you must carry out 20% off the job training, which you can do here on our computer systems. Um, I think that's roughly everything that we're covering on site carpentry. We've got good workshops, uh, good facilities. Um, I'm lucky this year, we've got brand new tools. So um, take advantage of coming in using brand new tools and power tools. On that note, I will hand you over to Trevor, um, who um, carries out bench joinery. And thank you. Thanks, Simon. Um, regarding bench joinery or architectural joinery, as it's known um, with the apprenticeships, um, it's a similar program. So it's a standards program. Um, it's generally a two year course, unless you've got any um, recognized prior learning. Um, if you've got uh, something like a level one diploma, then we can reduce the length of your apprenticeship um, down a little bit. Um, we cover everything that you would um, tend to cover as a full time student. Um, so manufacturing things like um, door frames, doors, windows, uh, staircases, cabinet work and things like this. Um, at level two, you will be focusing on um, routine joinery or generally straight joinery. And if you were to do the advanced level three apprenticeship, you would then um, start to work on curved work um, and things like turn stairs and uh, shaped, shaped windows and doors and things like this. Um, it's a government funded program, so um, there's no expense for you as an apprentice. Um, attendance is one day a week um, at the college. And, uh, and at the end of it, just like the other courses you heard there, um, there'll be an endpoint assessment. So the whole idea over the two years is to try and uh, work very closely with your employer and fill in any skills gaps um, to prepare you for that endpoint assessment so that you can pass that comfortably and gain, gain your qualification. Um, uh, that's just about it really on uh, architectural joinery. Um, I think I've got a hand back to Leslie now, is it? Yeah, thank you very much team. That was brilliant and a really great insight to all the lovely courses that we have on offer and some really in-depth explana explanations about what goes on within the departments. Um, so I can see within um, the question and answer boxes that there's been a um, few questions. So if you can all stay live for me and I'm going to hand some of the questions back to you. Um, so I'll start with um, one at the top. It um, says, glad to hear that you um, about the industry links. Do students have any input about which companies they get to do their work exper experience placements with? So, um, Trevor, would you like to sort of talk about the work experience um, your guys um, have? Yes, they do. They, um, they do take it. They have a big input. They um, Very early on in the year, they research um, potential companies and it's part of their coursework to um, contact those companies, create CVs, email the companies and um, try and identify a company that they would like to go and go and do some work experience with. And then um, hopefully if all goes well, well, we'll get them the placement and we'll do everything we can to help them with that. Uh, we give them help um, writing their CVs, Progression Plus come in, um, a lot of support um, all the way through, but it, it is a requirement of the course. Thank you. Have you got any examples of place, placements which students had last year? Um, yes, well, um, we got um, well, we had a fantastic one where a company came in where they wanted um, a number of apprentices to go out um, and work, and that was done over a little period of time. That was setting up a um, furniture showroom, which uh, which might sound a bit odd, but it was a good insight as to um, how um, you got to work as a team member um, it, because it was quite a big project. Um, so um, ideally, we would get them placed in factories, but if not, we will get them placed in. Um, uh, environments whereby they're going to learn those sort of key skills that makes them really employable. Um, you know, teamwork and all this sort of, sort of thing is very, very important. Brilliant. Thank you. Barry, I know that you've been a lead on work experience for the area. Can you sort of give us a little bit more of an insight about work experience? You are on mute, Barry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, we've... Um... We've had a number of 
really, really successful situations where people have gone out and they've done work experience. During their work experience, they've um, they've met people who've then gone on to become their employers. Um, we had a situation where we've got a local small builder um, working out of the Cotform area called John Allen, and he takes our students from the bricklaying department. Um, it, he has one every week until they've all had a go. And uh, during that, um, there was a conversation with a, a uh, an employer who's funnily enough an ex-student of ours and was looking for an apprenticeship and on John's recommendation as well as you know a conversation that he had with the tutors here at the college that led to uh, some him taking on his first apprentice which uh, was a wonderful story for us because it sort of closed a bit of a circuit um, so yeah that's uh, the, the the work experience is is so worthwhile and it does change the students some of them come back from from, well, most of them come back from work experience enlightened about the real world and they come back and they have an a, a, a even bigger thirst for learning, really. Fantastic. Thank you, Barry. OK, we've got another question here, um, sort of aimed at um, site carpentry. So one for you, Simon. Am I able to go straight into level two site carpentry without doing level one? Um, officially, you're supposed to do uh, level one diploma first, um, and then you progress into level two. If you've been in the building trade and we, we will carry out an interview uh, with you and sort of ask you questions. And if we feel that um, you're sort of clever enough to go into level two, um, there could be a possibility that you can go straight into level two. But normally the system is you do your level one first and then go into your level two. No. And, and I would imagine that if you're you're joining at a level one and obviously the, uh, Jeremy's doing all of his skill checks, if he feels that somebody is absolutely an exceptional carpenter, then he would actually, we would never keep a learner back. No, no, we, no. We, yeah, we can transfer them straight over um, into level two. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, um, another question that I've got. Do um, do you get any girls who take these courses? So um, shall we start with um, Barry? Thank you. Yes, certainly do. Um, we've got two two young ladies who are in Brick Lane at the moment and are really excelling, um, uh, hoping to go on to the apprenticeship program. We've got a young lady who is in the in uh, prep for employment the employment skills course doing very very well so yes we do have girls and uh, yeah they come in and they get they get on really well and they find jobs so yes is the answer to that certainly on our side okay um Trevor would you like to talk I, um you've you've had you've got female learners yeah, we've, we've had female learners for a number of years now. Um, bench joinery and furniture making, there's absolutely no reason why, why anyone can't be a brilliant joiner or a brilliant furniture maker. So um, we would encourage anyone to come along and, and um, take these courses on and, uh, you know, um, just go for it. <laughs> brilliant. Thank you. Simon, currently, do you have any um, females in, in your courses? Yes, I do. Yes, um, we've got a female who, who carried out the level two uh, an apprenticeship. She is now going into level three. And uh, yes, she's doing very well. Um, it's one of these situations where you think I could do with a big team of these girls type of girls. She is really, really a good carpenter. Fantastic. Thank you. OK, moving on to another question. So this is about employment skills. So, so one for you, Barry. Um, can I go straight into employment skills level two? Yes. The, the simple answer is yes, if it suits. So we would conduct an interview. Um, we'd have a skills check to see where, where, where you would be at. Um, and if it's suited, then yes. What we generally tend to do is uh, start someone on level one and then transfer them up very, very quickly if, it's, if we think that they can do level two. Um, it's all about stretching and challenging. It's all about getting the right course for the individual. Um, so yes, as long as it suits, if it's yeah, the right thanks. course. 
Brilliant, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, we have got another question sort of touching on work experience. And I think we have sort of covered work experience quite extensively, but I just want to clarify um, things a little bit because the question is, is there any work experience including part of the carpentry or bricklaying course, which I think we've, we have discussed. However, um, at each level of the course, courses that you come on to, so level one, level two or level three, um, there are um, different amount of hours included that you would have to do for work experience. So for level one, you would be doing a minimum of 15 hours of work experience or and some work related learning. For level two, you'd have um, 25 hours of work placement, and uh, we'd be looking at 25 hours of work-related learning. Um, and um, currently at level three, we would be looking at 30 hours work placement and 25 hours of work-related learning. So hopefully that answers that question, but if you need any more details, please do type in the box. Um, if one for um, carpenters, really, it doesn't actually... Um, so it's not really subject specific. It's just saying, what career can I do if I do a carpentry course? So being as there's sort of three routes, maybe we should just take it in turns to sort of expand on the career um, career route. So Simon, shall we start with you this time? What career routes are there for site carpenters? Yeah, um, very good career. Um, once you get uh, your, your trades behind you, you can class as a tradesman. Um, you could travel the world um, doing carpentry. Um, there's specialist work out there, roofing, stairs. So th the avenue that you can take is is endless. It's a good career to, to go for. Okay, lovely. Well, how about um, Trevor? Have you got anything that you can add regarding sort of um, bench joinery and um, the furniture making? Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, the, the skills are so transferable, whether you're, whether you're a bench joiner or a furniture maker, you'll be learning to use the full range of all the hand tools, the portable power tools and all of the machinery. And those, those skills can be used in, you know, furniture making, cabinet making, uh, bench joinery, shop fitting. Um, you could go into specialist areas like chair manufacturing or stair manufacturing. Um, boat building, kitchen manufacturing, uh, restoration. There's just many, many avenues that you could you could go down. Lovely, thank you. All right. Um, so I've got another question here. Um, if courses are only three days, um, are there any other things that students can pick, pick up on? So for example, sport. So I'll answer this a little bit and then if you guys have got anything that you'd like to add, then um, we, we can do that. So yes, the courses are only three days, um, but a lot of our learners do find that they um, get part-time work for the other two days. Um, also within the um, college, we do have a busy students union that does offer some clubs and things that do go on on some of the additional days or um, in the evenings. Um, then um, also there are the, the opportunities for work experience that would be offered on the other two days. Um, has anybody else got anything that they would like to add to that? I think that is a no. So, okay, so if um, we move on to the next question, if I want to progress onto site management, do I have to do a brick or carpentry course first? If so, what level? Okay, so um, who would like to take that one? Barry, would you like to take that one? Yeah, um, the, if, you're, if you're interested in, in uh, site management, there's no need for you to, to do a bricklaying or carpentry course first. Um, so the answer to that is no. Generally speaking, people people who go into site management have some experience in the building industry and, um, as I say, some experience didn't need to be bricklaying or carpentry. Um, or there are people who go straight in at graduate level and go straight in, you know, they want to be site managers and that's what they do. So the simple answer is no, you don't have to do that first. And it could be a possibility that they look at the T level. For sure, for sure. So I would, I would recommend that you have a look at the T-level offer as well, if that's something that you're thinking of doing. Very much so, especially as it, the, the design section of it, the, that's going to be the first one that we run. 
yeah. um, lot of surveying and, and that site management style skills in that. So that might be a good good option. Yeah. Again, Barry, the, um, if they sort of went through the courses, it will be a good mindset for them to then go into the management so they'll have some um, idea of what's happened in the building trade. <clears throat> yep. There is that too. Yes, yeah. thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so we have another question. Um, do I need to wear a uniform? So um, it's not, again, specific to any particular area, um, but um, generally within the workshops, there there is PPE, there's PPE that has to be worn. So um, maybe if, um, uh, Trevor, can you talk about, or, or actually let's throw this out to Jeremy because Jeremy um, is there and we haven't thrown a question to Jeremy. So Jeremy, what sort of PPE do we need to wear in um, for carpentry? Thanks very, thanks very much for that. Yes, superb. Um, yeah, within uh, carpentry, there, there aren't, isn't any specific uh, requirements to wear um, clothes, specific cl types of clothes. Um, but of course, within all construction areas, it's safety boots is essential. Um, we also make sure we cover up arms and legs so there's no shorts or T-shirts to be worn. Um, when we're dealing with specific things uh, on machines then and portable power tools then there's the likes of uh, safety glasses ear protection masks to um, stop the dust from sort of getting into uh, into you know inhaling that way uh, in, and um, so as far as clothes are concerned what we tend to say is if you don't mind getting it dirty dusty get some glue on it perhaps something like that then you can wear something that's comfortable, not too baggy, because we don't want that catching up as well. Um, I think that's very similar in relation to the um, site carpentry and the bench joinery side of it as well. Okay, uh, do you guys agree? Yeah, okay, brilliant. Okay, and Barry, what about for the brick shop, the brickwork workshops? Right, in, in, in Brick Lane, um, in the workshop, we now insist on high-vis jackets, uh, or oh, sorry, high-vis vests, um, gloves, um, and eye protection when when necessary. Uh, we also wear obviously boots. Um, we don't insist on any particular clothing, but you they are need to be work clothes because obviously the messiness of the of, of the job. And that the same goes for the employment skills course, um, especially with the plaster the plastering because that does get rather mucky, especially when you're when you're learning. So you've got to be you know you've got to be dressed in old old clothes suitable to get to the environment um but that's the, that's the ppe that we insist on yeah and i do remember when we were last at the employ the employers panel they were discussing about hard hats and how in the workshops at the moment our students don't necessarily have to wear hard hats so we we were we were saying that this year for part of the, when doing assessments and things we were going to introduce the hard hat going into into the uh, workshops Absolutely, and that, and also we do we do wear hard hats now when um, you know when necessary. I mean, for instance, today in, um, they were plastering ceilings, so they were working above their heads, and so hard hats were were worn. So um, we are in line uh, with industry, and we're trying to trying to get them even more in line. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Okay, so moving on to another question: um, Is level two site carpentry available to do as a part time course? Uh, yes, I'll jump in here if you don't mind. Um, <clears throat> we do level two uh, carpentry in the evening class. Um, this is largely dependent on um, on your age. The evening class usually relates to adult learners. Um, so anybody who's sort of 19 uh, and over. Um, so that's that's two nights a week, six o'clock till uh, nine o'clock. Um, so quite a commitment that way. So that's certainly for part-time students. Uh, I think in relation to the um, other course, then probably Simon could uh, Simon and um, excuse me, Trevor can probably uh, jump in a little bit more because I know Trevor certainly has some furniture and some um, base joinery guys who come in one day a week. Yes, um, yeah, Trevor, would you like to explain how your um, part-time courses work? Yes, we do. If uh, Essentially, if there was enough people that wanted to do level two or level three bench joinery and we could run an evening course, then then then, then it will go ahead. But um, uh, if there's maybe not the numbers, um, we offer the students the chance to come in during the week and complete six hours work uh, during the week and they join the full-time students. 
And um, we've done that for the last couple of years and it works fantastically well. It gives people a, a great option. Um, they can build it into maybe their, their, their work life um, and get that, get that balance really nice. And um, they haven't got to spend their evenings coming to college. <laughs> um, and uh, so far it's, it's, been, it's been really well received. And again, with, and again, sorry, with site carpentry, we do an evening course, two evenings uh, a week, uh, six till nine o'clock. And we cover all the um, level twos um, program on those two evenings as well. Brilliant, thank you. And um, the questions are coming thick and fast now, so this is great. Um, are you a fully trained carpenter after three years? So if we go over to Trevor for that one. Um, yeah, I, I would suggest that with, um, with this trade, like most trades, you never stop learning. So <laughs> I'd, I'd be very wary of anyone who says they know it all. Um, and really the aim is, is to get you to a point whereby you can go out and earn a living um, and hold your own in the workplace. And at level two and level three, you will be able to do that. You will be able to go into the workplace and start earning a living. And then as, as you progress through your career, you'll build your skills up. You'll never stop learning new things. Um, so it's, it's, you, won't, you won't finish here at college as the finished article. It's an ongoing process. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Um, Simon, do you have anything to add to that one? Yes. Um, as, as Trevor said, we, you, you never stop learning. You will become a tradesman after two or three years, but during your years of work, you're always learning something new. Um, so, but it's a good career to have and you can earn some some good money out in the building trade. I wonder if I can just add- Of course. Something else, please. Um, from the point of view that uh, it, the, the qualification is the, the diploma level three qualification, which is a very high qualification. Um, there is always the NVQ part of that, which can be attained um, potentially through and largely through the apprenticeship route. Uh, which is um, another aspect uh, and lifts even further. Uh, yeah, excellent trade to be in. Brilliant. Okay, so moving on to the next um, question, it's about um, what happens if I fail maths and English? So um, this is something probably that I can answer and then you guys, if you need to add anything, you can. So with our courses, um, if you... Um, if um, if you're joining at level one, you would just need to have a keen interest in the um, vocational subject that you're going to study. So, and then you would continue to work on your maths and English GCSE. And we have an expert team here at the college to help you gain the grades that you need. Um, so to get to your level four, I'm sorry, your grade four. So for a level two, um, generally, because the, the college has um, sort of just recently been revising um, the entry requirements for courses. So for level two, we'd be looking generally at four GCSEs at three or above. We do, you know, we do encourage learners really for a level two to have got their grade four in um, maths and English because um, there, the, within, especially, there's a lot of measurements and mathematics that goes on within construction but obviously the guys will do um, assessments with you but those are the criteria that we're looking for for level three we are looking for five gcses all at level four and above and they have to be inclusive of maths and english um, guys do you have anything else that you want to add to sort of my explanation uh, I, I, no. only sorry yeah. Leslie, only that um you know um I've got some students this year who, who progressed from level two to level three and they didn't quite get that grade four that they needed. And what they're doing is they're just having to continue their study. Um, so we'll do, we'll do everything we can to support them so that they can continue and progress on to level three. Yeah. Thank you. All right, then. So um, next question is, um, oh, I, sorry, bear with me. I just need to move my chat box because all of a sudden the questions have moved. Bear with me, sorry. Okay, um, if I took the level one carpentry course, could I take the business studies course at the same time? Um, unfortunately, um, that's not possible because both of the courses are, um, are um, full-time courses. So even though you come into college for three days a week on the courses, the government will only fund you for one course. 
So unfortunately, that isn't an option to go on to two full time courses. Does anybody have anything to add to that, Barry? No, I think I think you've uh, you've um, covered that well. I mean, there is. See, I, I have in the past experienced people who've come in and taken more than one course, but they've done one as a as a part time course yeah. in the. Um, so, yeah, the yeah the two the two, doing two full time courses unfortunately is impossible. Okay, um, we also have a question about do we do any part time hobby courses? Um, we do do some um, sort of um, some short courses on a Saturday, um, which we have got one starting in a couple of weeks' time, haven't we? Not Barry. So. Um, yeah. If you, yeah. Could you give a yeah, bit of detail? Yeah, sure. Um, we, we do a, um, a, a, what we call a DIY course, uh, which runs over four weeks, um, four, four consecutive Saturdays. Um, and that covers um, some electrical installation work and um, around sort of uh, plugs and wiring, uh, simple wiring. Um, and then there's a bit of plumbing with the um, uh, taps and uh, wastes that they do. Then there's some carpentry where people learn to um, do some hinge, uh, hinges and some architrave and some door furniture. And then there is uh, one week where there's some plaster boarding, some dry lining and um, some ceramic tiling. And that makes up the DIY course. And then also twice a year on, on over some I think it's six consecutive Saturdays. We have a, a, a plastering course that we run on a Saturday morning as well. Um, I think that's our main short courses for construction. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Barry. OK, so um, on my um, question box now, I've only got one question left. So if anybody's got anything else to add, please put your questions in now. Um, so this one is, do I get a blue CSCS card once you finish your level two site carpentry apprenticeship? So um, that would be one for you then, Simon. Okay, thank you. Um, you have to complete your uh, level two course, uh, MVQ. Um, you have to apply for your CSCS card. Um, I'm not, 100% certain of what the colour is, because the colours have all changed again. Um, but yes, definitely, once you've completed your uh, level two MVQ, you can apply for your um, CSCS card. Okay, Jeremy, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I would uh, I would sort of agree with that. Yeah, MVQ, and then you can apply. Um, you still need to undertake a health and safety um, assessment question question assessment on there before that consolidates that and that will be the same at any level um, and any uh, subject that you happen to be wanting to go go in for the health and safety requirements are um, essential um, but you do need to get that in VQ uh, that's the only way you can get the um, CS CS card Lovely, thank you. Okay, so that appears to be all of the questions answered. But if you do have any other questions, please do email the college and we will get back to you. Um, we've really enjoyed being with you tonight and I hope you've enjoyed um, our open events. Um, we look forward to um, receiving your applications. Um, all the details on how to apply are online.